Greetings! I am Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. This is going to be my part one of my anime slash Bessem sort of combination. Um, I'm going to sort of put them in two parts A and parts B, and part one of part A. Well, that's a little confusing. So I'm going to sort of divide it up into each of these episodes. I'm going to talk about three anime, and then I'm going to talk about them in a second episode right after that of the three Bessem sort of related worlds. So there you go. So today's three anime, well, they're ones that are very, I like them a lot. I'm, I'm rating everything, and I'm going to be rating a one to five how much I like it. I'm only reviewing stuff I like. <laughs> That's the thing is, this is stuff I watch. These are the animes I watch, so I'm going to stick with that, and stick with ones I enjoy. So let's begin. So the first one is uh, the High School Fleet, or High Free. Now, this anime, it's been going on this season, so it's a newer one. I'm not sure how many episodes it's going to end up being. If it's just going to be end up being around the 12 or 13, or if it's going to be a two-season-long um, anime. We're going to find out. But we're decent enough in that I can give a sort of decent enough review. And in these animes, if something changes in how I'm re I feel about them, I'll let you know when they're done. So anyway, so this anime, it's about this world where... It, it, they don't give a lot of details about it, but a lot of flooding has occurred. There's this big sort of push to be, you know, traveling an ocean and fleet-based. And the main military fleet, or sort of security fleet, is the Blue Mermaids. And they're all women. It, in this world, it sort of was established that women were better, because of various reasons, at being in charge of battleships and stuff, and keeping the peace. And so that's what the Blue Mermaids are. They're the main organization for keeping the peace. So we have our main girl, Akeno Misaki. She grows, grows up wanting to be a Blue Mermaid. And her and her best friend sort of like make, give this kind of oath. And they get into this high school, which is teaching them to be Blue Mermaids. And one of the first things that occurs is there's like a big training thing. And both Misaki and her friend are put in charge of ships. Uh, Misaki's put in charge of the Harikaze. Now, that's where this series starts out. So, everything that occurs now is on that ship, and it's all about their misadventures, and things don't go as planned, and there's a lot of other stuff going on, and there's sort of this entire established um, kind of hierarchy of things that go wrong, and things that go right, and it's very interesting. It's very fun. So, I've told you about the main character. Now, each of these reviews, I'm going to give three kind of uh, genres that I believe the anime fits into. Now this one, I think it fits into military action, slice of life, and cute girls, what I'm going to call these ones. Now military action, they're on a battleship, and it seems like every episode, in some way, there's something related to being on a battleship. There's either some kind of weapons fire, a maneuvering around, things like that, that it is very sort of military oriented, because there are a bunch of high school students on a battleship. <laughs> Now that's where the sort of slice of life comes in. Like, there's a lot of stuff with what's going on in the ship that's very reminiscent of a lot of the slice of life anime that goes on, except the setting's sort of different, you know? So you get a feel of that sort of thing, of like, oh, they're all going to lunch, you know, all this is going on, all these things. It feels a little like it's a combination of a battleship and a school just because of how everything's established. It's very interesting in that way. And of course then the cute girls part is, they're all girls. The entire cast, girls. They hint at boys. They hint that boys are on the submarines. They encounter a submarine at one point in time. They never see them. <laughs> Not that they don't really haven't seen male characters in it, but it's sort of like the majority of characters that are seen are girls. You know, or female, I should really say. Because they do have, like, their teachers and stuff. And they are supposed to be high school students. So that's the sort of establishment of it. Now I rate this one a four out of one out of, from one out of five I rate it a four. Now remember this is a scale of me liking it. One would mean I like it a little bit, five would mean it's I'm gonna always watch it first thing when it comes out. This one is it's one of my top ones to watch in a week. It's actually very entertaining and for a lot of the other stuff that I've talked about in it, it does have some depth and it's not like super fan servicey, it has a little bit here and there, and it's not super like cutesy or anything. It has enough, I feel like, depth, especially with some of the storylines, that it works pretty well. The second series I want to talk about is the Gakun Toshi Asterix, or the Asterix War. Now I'm going to be talking about the second season, so this is the actual 
second season of the anime. And uh, I'm going to give a little bit of background on the actual told anime. This second season is all about a tournament. Now, in this world, it's established that something terrible happened and, you know, powers took over, new ones, you know, it's a new world order, it's sort of the future. And there's six big academies that have been established to teach these guns, Gunstella, which are people with superpowers that have been established. And they have these tournaments called Fiesta in between them. And these are like competitions to test themselves out in between these six academies. We're really kind of pushing ourselves in on this one academy and the characters from there. Now, the second season is taking place during one of these Fiesta, and it's going to be, it, it has been all about the battles between all these characters. So our two main characters are Ayato Amangari and Julius. They end up, for whatever reason, you know, from the first episode, becoming partners in this entire thing and working together. Now Ayato is looking for his sister who's disappeared, and that's his entire storyline, and he has his own sort of abilities and stuff. And Julius is the princess of this sort of puppet state country, and she wants to sort of make that a better country. And as I said, the second season here, which I'm getting into, is all about the tournament. So this is a combination of things. It's, it's a sci-fi supernatural first, which means it's sort of like they got special powers and they don't explain why these people have special powers, but it has a sort of sci-fi feel to it. Uh, this is an action anime, so there's a lot of action. There's a lot of battles, there's a lot of combat, they're fighting it out, they're using their powers. It's, it's just pretty cool. It's very entertaining. But it's also a harem anime. <laughs> but it's not the kind of harem anime you'd think of, too. I mean, it's not like there's some of those harem animes where it's ridiculously, and they're all like, it's Ayato. He kind of likes Julius. In the, the, a little bit of a spoiler, he kind of likes her throughout the series, and she kind of likes him. It's the normal, you already know they're the main characters. But he's more of a person that just is sort of nice to everybody. And there's a whole bunch of women, uh, only like three more, that are kind of attracted to him and treat him very nicely. And so, you know, it's got that sort of harem aspect to it because he's surrounded by women. But he really doesn't have anybody in particular, and he's not really looking for those. It's, it's functions around the action and that super, sort of sci-fi supernatural setting a lot more. Now this is another one I'm giving a four. I mean, it's it's very good. Again, it's like it's one of my top ones to watch of the week. It's not the one I'm watching as soon as it comes out, but it's the top of my list when I have options. Now the last one I'm going to talk about is Kagewane, and it's going to be the second season of it. This is another one that has had two seasons. Now this is a smaller anime. This is like a one of the like four minutes one animes. Uh, I'm going to call the smaller animes anything from like two minutes to twelve minutes. These are the smaller animes, they're not the full episodes. This one's sort of in the middle around four. Now what it's about is cryptids. It's about supernatural horrors and the encounters with people. And there's a professor named Bampa who's sort of the center of this entire anime that he kind of goes on things and like he shows up a lot in the first season and a lot of things are happening with him in the second season. And he doesn't show up in every episode but it's all sort of linked together that there's these stories that the, either they could be part of the overall plot or they can just be little vignettes that link to the overall plot in a little way that like something with some kind of cryptids going on and these creatures they often kill a lot of people and you know something's resolved in a various way that's why I kind of feel like this has this is a supernatural definitely because it's got these kind of like supernatural horrors uh, it's horror because a lot of people do die in this anime and some of them die pretty horribly Granted, there's a lot of times that you get to points where you're like, ah, oh, they're not going to do it. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't with some people. They have these sort of things, and these vignettes. But it's also a mystery, because the reason that these creatures exist, because they're all called Kagewani, even though there is only one Kagewani, which is this shadow crocodile, that's, that's hence the name of the anime, that does show up in it. But they're all seeming related to this thing, and there's an entire mystery around it and its origins and its abilities and things like that that are very interesting. So, I give this one a three. It, it, I like it still, but it's also like because it's so short and it's easy to watch, but also there's times where it's like, mmm, because you know. I'm not as big on a lot of those horror elements in anime sometimes because they can go from 
pretty acceptable, they're pretty brutal, and I'm not a big fan of the brutal ones, and this one kind of dances on that edge, hence why I give it a three. So these are the three anime I'm going to talk about. Um, I hope I didn't ramble on too long. So if you have anything to talk about with these, leave a comment below. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you already haven't. Share the video if you think someone else will enjoy this. We're going to continue in the next video when talking about these, dips, these animes and Bessem. So until next time, I bid you farewell.